This video was created to explain quasi-experimental research design using art education as examples. Quasi-experimental research designs are used when typical research designs are not practical. Quasi-experimentation does not use randomized sample groups. Quasi-experimentation was used heavily in the 1980s by many art educators to improve their classroom. This was also the time that discipline-based arts education was created, which makes this heightened use of quasi-experimentation understandable. In our current time, there are many paths to teaching our students about the visual arts, such as discipline-based arts education, choice-based arts education, child-centered, the Waldorf education model, the Montessori education model, and more. We can utilize quasi-experimentation in our classrooms to determine the best ways to teach our students. Quasi-experiments, a relationship between cause and effect is shown through what is taught and what is learned. When a quasi-experiment takes place, the researcher will develop a hypothesis. From the hypothesis, a research question is created that allows for the study to be done through quasi-experimentation. The researcher believes small groups can increase students' ability and comfort to give and receive constructive criticism. So they craft their research question. Can small group settings increase student ability to give and receive constructive criticism? This allows for both the cause and the effect to be listed in the question. A good way to think about research questions for quasi-experimentation is, can the change you want to make change or affect the learning or disposition you want to adjust? When developing your research question, you must determine what you want to change and what will cause the change. The cause and effect relationships are defined by independent and dependent variables. Independent variables are the experimental variable. It is a change you are making. An experimental variable can be a new teaching strategy or a new program. For example, you may want to add philosophical inquiry to your class because you want to study how the independent variable affects student verbal reasoning ability and their ability to define art. The independent variable affects the outcome, or dependent variable. Dependent variables are what you are hoping will happen. These are the three most popular quasi-experimental research designs. Non-equivalent control group design, time series design, and multiple time series design. Let's go back to our original research question. Can small group settings increase student ability to give and receive constructive criticism? In non-equivalent control group design, two groups are compared. One group does not have the treatment of a small group setting placed on their class. This is the control group. The treatment group does have the change implemented on the class. Both groups are tested with the same analysis tool. You may select two groups from the same school with the same teacher, or two groups that are at a different school, but then you must consider other variables when analyzing your results. This is a popular design among educators for its practicality and ease of comparing control and treatment groups. In time series design, one group is used to complete the research. Testing is done multiple times in succession to collect data before implementation and after implementation of the treatment. Time series design helps to show a significant change. This made up data from our original research question shows how a time series design is used to collect data over a long period of time. The section in blue shows the data collected before the treatment. It stays mostly consistent over the two years. 
The data in red shows the change after the treatment. We can see there is an increase every year in student ability to give constructive feedback. This study completed in 2012 determined how arts education affects math achievement. The data here can be analyzed as a time series study for each group. What this data does not show is the data from the control group school. Once you add a control group to a time series design, it becomes multiple time series design. Thinking back to our original question again, this made up data shows how small groups affect student ability to give constructive feedback. The box data shows the percentage of feedback before the treatment was implemented. This box data shows the percentage of feedback after the treatment was implemented. It is obvious that the control group or the group that did not receive the treatment stayed consistent over the four year sample period. While the treatment group was consistent before treatment and increased significantly after treatment. A few other quasi-experimental research designs are before and after one group design, non-equivalent comparison group design, non-equivalent group post-test only, non-equivalent groups pre-test, post-test, interrupted time series design, simple interrupted time series design, and reversal time series design. Data can be collected through multiple sources by using testing instruments. It is important that the testing instrument used to collect data accurately demonstrates the result of the independent variable being implemented on the sample group. Some examples of testing instruments are standardized tests, student grade reports, surveys, interviews, student enrollment numbers, and the pre-test, post-test combination. If there's ever a question about what testing instrument was used, most authors can be contacted for more information. The data gathered needs to be considered for validity. Validity is the quality of being factually sound. These are two types of validity for quasi-experimental research, internal and external. Internal questions the accuracy of the results. Problems that can affect internal validity are history, maturation, testing, instrumentation, selection, mortality, selection interaction, and statistical regression. For example, mortality affects the research done if the number of students tested is not consistent. Students who leave or move to the school will affect the data. External validity questions the ability to make the change on a larger scale. Using our research question as the example, if a single class made the change at one elementary school, external validity questions whether the entire school or entire district would be able to make the change. In the comments section of this post on our online class, please write about something in your school or your class for which you would like to use a quasi-experiment research design. Answer these questions. What is your research question? Why are you connected to this question? How could you accurately collect data? And what validity problems do you foresee? Thank you for watching this video on quasi-experimental research. For more information, please see my resources.